Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. My name is Anna and in this video I'm going to be using watercolors to draw this dragon that I'm tracing right now in my light box. I am tracing him on actually her. Oh, it's a girl. It's definitely a girl. But I'm tracing her on watercolor paper. It's the Arches 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. And this is my very first time using watercolors or this type of watercolor paper. Um, it's my first time using gouache in a more like substantial way because I used it with the Inktober. The few that I did, I used the gouache and I used a little bit of watercolor in them, but not a lot. I didn't really get a feel for it. It's just like I tried it, didn't work out, so then I just stopped using them. And I mostly used the gouache. I didn't really use the watercolor. There I am tracing it. I thought those scales were going to be so annoying, but you know what? I really like doing them. They didn't take me long at all. I thought it was going to take forever. Maybe I wasn't super thorough with them. I wasn't very precise or like I didn't make sure they're actually going in the direction they would really be going in because you know it's like it's like a mythical dragon so it could have weird scales that don't go in the right direction but it wasn't that bad I really thought I wouldn't want to do that and I was thinking of going with a smooth skin, like kind of like eel. Um, but I ended up doing this and it turned out okay. I think I did the neck. Yeah, I did the neck first. And then once I was done with that, I was like, well, that isn't that bad. Masking fluid, that's another thing. This is my first time using masking fluid and I didn't know what to expect with that either. I thought it was going to be like thick and goopy and uh, just, I don't know, but it went on like water. It went on so smoothly and it peels off great too. Not at all what I expected it to be like. I thought it was going to be sticky and problematic to take off. Um, there I am wetting my paper. Again, with the watercolors, I didn't know what to expect. I did watch some watercolor videos. Just like basic stuff. And so I, I noticed that people kind of go in layers. And that's what I did. And I was really nervous about it, like going too far. So I went in like many more layers than I think would I really, I think I really could have gone heavier with the paints initially, but I was too paranoid to do that. So I went really slowly and just kept drawing in between. So it, it took me a really long time to make this because I had to keep, stopping and letting it dry and since I work at night I couldn't really be like uh, using my hair dryer because everyone was asleep and I didn't want to bother anybody so instead I would just wait till the next day And it felt to me like I was going heavier than I was. Like there you could barely see any of the colors. They've just like faded so much. One thing I wish I had not done that I think would have made everything easier is the lines for the trees. I wish I would have left those out and have just done them only with watercolor afterwards because then I had to follow the lines and kind of figure out what trees were in the background and what color I wanted them. So I wish I would have just have left the background dark. Yeah, but I really like the way my trees turned out. 
maybe I wouldn't have done it like that if I had not done the line art. The wings are what I think took me the longest. <clears throat> it was like, I did a, like very light layers. I was so nervous about like ruining it. Especially once I had the background down, even though it wasn't like, like a huge amount of work, I was still nervous about ruining it. And now I realize I could have started off heavier with the colors, not like super heavy or anything, not to the point where I wanted them, but a lot heavier than where I started. And it would have kept my paper drier instead of me having to stop so much and dry my paper in between every time. And my paper would have dried quicker if I had just, you know, gone heavier with the watercolors instead of using so much water and going over them again and again. This paper did buckle. It buckled a lot. And what I did it was really weird because it was fine and the first few times I dried it it didn't you know it, it worked normally and nothing happened to it but like I think at the halfway point I dried it well I left it over overnight to work on it the next day and when I came back I saw that the edges were curling and kind of lifting the tape off the paper and when I went to show my son my progress, it just popped, which he thought was hilarious. But I had to then kind of figure out what to do. And when I took that tape off, it was like so wavy. The edges were like super wavy. So what I did was I laid it down, face down on my desk, my dining room table actually. And I wet it with a sponge. And then I put that mason, the same board it's stuck to, I put that masonite board on top of it. And then I laid a bunch of heavy books. I wet it with a sponge till it was like perfectly flat. And then I kind of dried it as much as I could. But then I laid that masonite board and then I laid a bunch of books on top. And I was kind of worried it would ruin that masonite board because... I don't even know if those things are waterproof. I mean, I know they're not waterproof, but I don't know how water resistant they are. But what I did was I cared more about my painting than the board is just $5 from Amazon, which it that board is awesome, by the way. But I just left it there for, I didn't work on my art. The day after so I actually left it two days not purposefully I was just gonna leave it overnight but I ended up not working on it the next day and uh, when I went to get it it was perfectly flat that worked so well but I don't know. I'm thinking I might want to stretch my paper from now on. There's that stuff coming off. Oh, it was like butter. Amazing. It came off in one piece, all of it. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. See how thin it is? You can see through it. And it's pretty flat. It was just so nice. I can't wait to use that more in the future I'm trying to erase my lines a little bit which I didn't do for the trees and then you could actually see my lines a lot but I went back in and outlined the trees more and made them darker which I wanted to do anyway but it was a lot harder to hide the lines up there not that I minded that much And I made that tree, I don't know if you can tell, but there's 
her tail is wrapped around the branch there right next to her. And I didn't like how that looked. So what I did, I didn't like it because I wanted that particular tree to be way off in the distance and be very vague to where you had to really look to know that her tail was there. I wanted it to be foggy and really off in the distance. But I messed up and made that tree too dark, so it brought it forward. And then I didn't know what to do. I was just like, oh, well, it's done. So I went darker with the tail that I had than I had planned to do originally. I really love working with watercolors. This is my favorite thing I've done so far. I thought color pencils, I thought I loved color pencils because you could be so precise with them and layer them and I really like them but this is definitely my thing. I can't wait to work with these so much. It's like normally when I'm working with something I start feeling impatient and want to just kind of finish it but with this I kept wanting to go back to it over and over again and I didn't mind working on it and I just wanted to keep going. I could have easily have overworked this because I really like using the watercolor so much and I know there's so much more I need to learn and I felt like in this piece I went from like you know nothing to kind of figuring them out a lot but not as much as I would have liked like looking back now I can see a lot of things that I could have done differently like masking off more sections maybe like some of the scales and then going in with the the bright colors also the way I mixed my colors I think I made them a little bit muddy or just not as bright as I'd I would have liked so I know next time uh, to kind of, I don't know, I, I think I need to let my colors dry completely before I go over them with another color and um, maybe take my time a little more with that. I'm only using three colors. I'm using a magenta, a bright yellow, and a uh, aquamarine blue. So I'm just using those three primaries. And then I have black to make stuff darker, which I really didn't even end up using. But I could have gotten just about any color with those three colors. I didn't have any issues getting, you know, the variety I wanted. The only thing I think is these colors are a little muddy. If, if like, where I wasn't really careful with them, they turned a little muddy. So I'm going to try getting, now that I know that I really love this, because I don't think I want to use any other medium for now. This is like, I really love using, using these because it's not a tedious medium. It's kind of like acrylics. But I don't know, I'm not like into acrylics like I, I was, well, not was. But when I was little, I really, I thought that was like what I wanted, right? I wanted acrylics really bad. And I actually never got them. Um, but to me, that was like real, you know, like true art supplies. Like professional 
stuff, either acrylics or oils. And I thought, now I'm talking when I was like a little, little kid, right? I thought oils were for like old people. Because <laughs> they were like in a lot of antique paintings. So I just assumed they were for old people. And I thought of acrylics as like the cool thing. And watercolors, I didn't really like them because, you know, my experience was with Crayola watercolors and they just, I don't know. I didn't like them. I also didn't know how to use them. Well, I wasn't at that age. I was really not trying to make art, you know, the way I am now. I was just like tracing stuff and coloring it with like color pencils or crayons as a teenager I got into watercolors for a little bit and they were the prang watercolor set I had like a couple of those and they I think I still have some of those pieces I can that my mom saved and I think I can find those and share those up you know sometime I will and I don't remember exactly how I felt about them I know that uh, when I was a teenager I still wanted acrylics but they were kind of pricey for me to get and I didn't want the cheap ones I wanted good acrylics So, yeah, I love these so much. And I also love the gouache. For some reason, I always thought I'd hate gouache. I, I imagine them being like tempera paints, like the, not like good tempera paints, but the, like the little kid non-toxic paints that are very flat and chalky. That's what I thought they would be like, but they're, they're kind of smooth when they go down. Oh, so I didn't even talk about this. <laughs> I'm going over that area. I erased it. I just took a sponge to it and kind of scraped it and got rid of as much as I could. And now I'm taking the gouache and going over them, trying to match the background as best I can. And I think it came out really good. The only thing is that you could see like little... Uh, lint like paper I don't know if it's paper lint or if it's l like little balls from the gouache because I would um, kind of like wet them re-wet them let them dry go over them again re-wet them so I don't know if those little specks are from the gouache or if they are from the uh, paper from me scraping the paper I don't I don't think it's from the paper though because the other side has it also. Just not as much as the left side of it where I, you know, fixed it up. But also that side was wetter when I put the gouache down on that side. I want to get a couple, like, good quality gouache tubes, like, from Windsor and Newton or something like that and I'm gonna get more watercolors I'm looking right now at the Daniel Smith watercolors because I want them to be as non-toxic as possible I know they're not I want the professional ones and I don't want that many tubes I'm thinking like just the primary the primary cool colors and then some primary warm colors or just get like you know basic primaries he's got like three pack of the primaries I might get that and then I might get a magenta a like a toned down yellow a burnt umber and an aquamarine because I went through these really quickly especially the yellow So I'm going to get those. And I also want like a couple brushes. 
not that these br th these brushes were great. These brushes were from Walmart. And I didn't buy them. My son bought them for me to, uh, he, he got me a bunch of supplies for me to do like a challenge where I would use his supplies that he bought me. But oh my gosh, he got me like the worst. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Sorry about my squeaky chair. He got me glitter. That's so not cool. <laughs> He got me glitter and I think he got me some acrylic paints, but like just like orange and turquoise, turquoise, <laughs> those colors. And I'm still going to do it, but it's going to take me a bit to do that. I keep thinking of what to like draw with those, the color palette he gave me. I guess it's like a three marker challenge. Or a two marker challenge. But yeah, he got me these brushes to use with those acrylics, but they're perfect for this. I don't know what they were meant for, intended for, but they worked awesome with watercolors. And I could get like super thin lines. Like if you see the eye, well, now you can't really tell, but the eyes, I actually outlined them. I used these brushes to outline everything. And I could get like super fine lines. It's like a 12, number 12, and a number 10 brush. And I love the sizes. The sizes are perfect, but I want to get better quality ones just because I feel like these are gonna they're not gonna last very long or they might I just I like having variety the wings are what took me the longest and the talons I use the Calero metallic paints, I mean metallic watercolors in this, and at first I didn't like how it looked, like I put it on the horns and I didn't like how it looked, I thought it looked tacky, and I still kept using them. You know, I, I started doing, like, the scales with them and stuff. You'll see in a bit. Here I'm just highlighting them. There I am. I'm putting them on the scales. And I was still thinking, you know, they look kind of tacky. It started looking like, I don't know. I wasn't loving it. But it looks, it, it started growing on me, especially toward the end, right here, where I put that gold on the wings. I love how that made the wings look. It looks so pretty. It looks like, you know, like the sun is shining through them in person, because the video does not do this justice. Not that it's as vibrant as I would have liked it in person either. It's pretty vibrant, though. It's way more vibrant than you can see at the video. And you'll see at the end, because I did scan this, like, and I, you know, I, I took a really good scan. And the end shot of it matches the real life one. Um, I forgot what I was saying. It's like, oh my gosh, it's like 5 a.m. right now. <gasps> Why did it feel so early? What is this? <gasps> Why is it so late? I 
I did not realize it was this late. I thought it was like three in the morning. I did the gold in the eyes, but I didn't like how that looked. It was like too stark, you know, just this like, there was no detail, no definition. There's no glint. I mean, I just didn't like it. So I went over the eyes again later. You could kind of see the wings there a little bit, how shiny they are. They look so pretty. Here's that I retaped this down and I had to use this box tape and I thought it would rip my paper up, but it was great. It came off so easily, way better than the scotch tape, which actually did take some of the the paper off. But this was smooth, so I think that's what I'm going to use from now on because it held that on there really tightly. There you can see the shiny stuff. And yeah, it definitely grew on me. I really like it now. I love, love the wings. They look so pretty in person. They're so shiny, but just like iridescent. So that's my favorite part of it is the wings. As far as the shiny stuff. I really love how this turned out. So you can see a little bit of the glitter on the eyes, a little bit of the shine on the eyes. And I love how it turned out with just that little bit where you have to be at just the right angle to see it. But you can also see detail in the eyes. Anyway, guys, I hope you like this. There's the finished piece. As you can see, there's a huge difference from this to the one I was showing. Also, I edited this in Photoshop. I didn't really change much. I just tried my best to match from my scan. I tried my best to match the colors, the original colors. And I did. I think I did match them up pretty good. And I did go back in and work on some stuff uh, later, you know, after that I didn't videotape because it was like the next day and I noticed all these little things. I added some more light. And I also added uh, some more blue on her neck because I felt like the there was, you know, too much, no gradual color change. So I added some blue on her neck and I'm still even thinking to go in to it and add a few, a little more blue on the bottom scales just to kind of bring that blew a little bit down but I didn't want too much attention there so I like it the way it is I worked a little more on the trees added some more highlights uh, I did that with the gouache so I went back in with the gouache and added a little more brightness to it uh, especially in that area around her head and there it is I love it I love it so much I can't wait to do my next piece with watercolors this is like so awesome. I've never been so excited about an art medium before. Um, I can't wait to learn more and make new cool things. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe. Uh, check out my Facebook, Delivery Art on Facebook. I also have a Twitter, um, no wait, not Twitter, Instagram. And I'm actually posting on there. I'm posting on Instagram the like, you know, like when I'm going through a piece, I will post updates on there. And so yeah, check out my Instagram. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, I know I went, I kind of just rambled on through this video. Um, but if I you have any questions, please ask them below in the comments and I'll try my best to answer. If you want to know about any of the supplies and I didn't list them because I they're going to be listed down in the description. But if I didn't, I missed anything, just let me know. Anyways, thank you guys so much again and I'll see you next time. Bye.